Hello everyone! In this video we're going to learn about how we can get input from a user to control comments in our code and how we can use parameters to make our functions even more reusable. So let's get started. To write programs that give users the ability to interact with and control parts of our code, we can use the command input. To save the input that the user gave, we assign it to a variable. We type the name of our variable followed by an equal sign. Instead of entering a value for the variable ourselves, we use the command input followed by a set of parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we write the text prompt that we want the user to see inside quotation marks. In this code, we are asking the user to determine what color our square should be. We have named the variable square color and are asking the question what color should the square be. We are then using this variable value to assign a color to the turtle before it draws the square. Just a quick note, we are using the variable name at square color instead of just color because the color is a reserved word in Python. So it cannot be used as a variable name because there is already a command using the word color. We need to choose something else for our variable. When we run this code, the user will see the text prompt and will be able to type in an answer. The user's argument blue is given as an argument to the color command. Our turtle then changes its color to blue and draws the square. If you try to use the input command to get a number from the user and use it as a number in our code, the turtle will give us an error. This is because the turtle reads everything that the user enters as a word by default. It's very simple to change a user's input to be read as a number by using the command int. All we need to do is surround our entire input command by the term int and place parentheses around it. You will notice two closed parentheses at the end of the phrase. This is because we open two parentheses throughout our phrase, so we need to make sure to close both of them or the program will respond with an error. In this code we want the user to tell us what the length of the square should be, so we ask the question what is the square's length and surround it with both input and int commands. We also may notice that we are changing the value of the user input in the forward command. We can change user input just as we would a variable value. The output of our code is two squares with the lengths that were specified by the user separated by some space between them. Now let's take a look at the parameters. Parameters allows us to customize the commands used in our functions. Parameters are used because they give us the ability to tailor our function values to suit our specific needs. Let's look at this example called square function. This function is being defined on line 3 and the commands in the function have our turtle draw a purple square with a length of 50 and then move forward the length of the square. But what if you wanted to then draw a red square or if you wanted two squares of different sizes? Without the ability to use parameters, we would need to make entirely new function to accomplish this. Parameters make it easy to change certain parts of a function so that we can reuse the same function to accomplish multiple tasks. Let's take a deeper look into how parameters are created and used. To use a parameter, you must first include its name in the function definition. The name you give the parameter, such as square color, must be the same name placed throughout your function commands wherever you want to use that value. When calling a function, if the function requires any parameters, you have to include the arguments or parameter values between the parentheses so that the function can use these values when performing the commands. You can use as many parameters as you want, but make sure that when calling the function, you enter an argument or value for each parameter. Also, don't forget about their orders. Let's take a look at this syntax in action. In this code, we have a function called square that is taking two parameters, which are called square color and length. The parameters are created between the parentheses after the function name. The parameters are then being used throughout the function to control the color and the length of the square and the distance our turtle moves forward after drawing the square. In our function call, you will see that we have provided the two arguments to be used throughout the function. We are first using red for our square color parameter and 100 for our length parameter. The turtle reads the arguments in order and assigns them to the parameters in the same order. After the first function is completed, the same function is being called, but instead with green for the square color parameter and 50 for the length. When we run this code, this is the output we get. And we did it all in just 15 lines of code. In next example, we want to ask the user for three colors and for three length values 
and then draw three squares centered on the canvas with those lengths. Because we are not going to know what the length values are going to be entered by a user, we need to write a code that will be able to work for any values entered. Let's do a bit of planning before we start coding. Let's start with the biggest square here. The length of the square is 200 and we need to move down and left 100 to get to the bottom left corner of the square. For the medium sized square its length is 100 and we need to move the turtle down and left for 50 pixels to get to the bottom left corner. And for the smaller square its length is 50 and we need to move 25 pixels down and left. So we could make the correlation that no matter what the length is, we need to move the turtle down and left for the half length to get to the bottom left corner. In order for this to always work through before we start drawing the next square, we need to move the turtle back to the center position. Now let's write this code. Let's write a function that will move the turtle to the correct starting position, then draw a square, and then move back to the center. That way we can call this function for all three squares we need to draw. We are going to start with the defining a square function and we know that the user is going to be giving us the color of the square and the length value. So we want to give these values into our function as parameters. Now we can start writing the comments of our function. First, I want the turtle to move to the bottom left corner of the square. To do so, I will define another function named bottom left. The first comment of this function will be write 90 so it's facing down and then move it forward for half of the length. Now I need to turn it back to face the right, so I will use left 90 command. Then the turtle must go backward for half of the length. Now our turtle is ready to draw my square. Alright, to do so let's call pen down command and then give color to the square. Next type commands to draw a square that we already know. Then I want my turtle go back to the center. So I can use pen up and set position to 0 0. Let's test our function using a function call where we enter color and length values. So I'll write square red and 100 and see if the turtle does that. Like you can see everything works fine. Now instead of giving the length value, we want to get it from the user. I need to save the response in a variable. So I'll write color1 equals input color of the first square and length1 equals int input length of the first square. Next, instead of using 100 for my length, let's use the first length value when we call our function. I need to copy and paste these three lines of code two more times so that I can get my three squares. I'm gonna save them as second color and second length and third color and third length. Then I want to call my function using these different colors and length values, so instead of the first color I will use second color and third color. The same logic applies to the length. Let's see how that works for 50, 100 and 200. Everything is good. Now let's go back to our chessboard program and see how we can make it more interactive. So now we know about user input, I can rewrite these lines of code to let a user to control the properties of our chessboard. So length is equal to not 50 this time, but int input, the length of one square, the same logic applies to the number of rows. Then I will use just input commands without int command to the colors because both of them are text not numbers. Let's go to the square function and add two parameters there, square color and length, and use these two parameters in the function. So I will add a color command. If you have noticed in the previous lesson, functions called draw odd row and draw even row have the same logic but a different order of colors. Because we didn't know about the parameters we have used two functions. By the end of this lesson we can use only one of them. So let's rename this function from draw what row to just draw row and let's give some parameters to this function. They will be rows, length, square one color, square two color. If you remember we fixed the square function at the beginning of the program, we added a forward length comment at the end of this program, which will go forward for the length of the square in the end of the function. That's why I can delete forward length commands in our draw row function. Also we used the color of the square as a parameter, so I can delete color commands too. Now I need to pass these parameters to square function. So I'll pass square one color and length parameters to the first square function and square two color and length parameters to the second square function. Now let's get rid of draw even row function, because we don't need it anymore. Let's give parameters to move up function such as rows and lengths. And now let's go to the final part, 
where I will use only draw row function instead of two functions with different names but the same logic. All I need to do is just pass parameters to the functions in the correct order. So for the first draw row command, I will pass parameters such as rows, lengths, color1 and color2. And do the same for the second function, where I will only change the order of the color1 and color2. And let's give parameters to the moveUp function. That's all. Let's check our program. Let's give program values 40, 10, blue and green. Like you can see, everything works fine. In this lesson, we learned how to get input from a user and how to change input from a word to a number. We also learned how to use parameters to make our functions even more reusable. Refer to the example we went through to help you collect user input and use parameters to solve some turtle challenges of your own.